Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. Over here we have a bunch of stories for you today. Four big ones, in fact. Uh, a weird thing happened on Nintendo Switch's eShop we gotta talk about. Uh, there's also a big update in regards to some Pokemon stuff. We have a new major shareholder in Nintendo. We also have some news on Xenoblade Chronicles 3 I find to be quite interesting. Uh, before we get into all this stuff, though, I gotta remind you that, hey, we have a giveaway going on right now for two copies of Mario Strikers Battle League. To enter, all you have to do is head down to the pinned comment or the description to enter. Also, by the way, this video is actually sponsored and brought to you by Into the AM. They make these amazing printed tees you see right here. I got a few examples here I can show you guys. These are some super high quality prints that are honestly the best, like industry leading, with the t-shirts being super, super soft. And they don't just do printed tees. In fact, here is one that's just a standard basic tee, just a nice little white t-shirt with a tiny little Into the AM logo that I like wearing for undershirts. In fact, most of my wardrobe at this point is either made up of Nintendo Prime merchandise or Into the AM. Uh, and the, I believe in this stuff so much, we've teamed with them to give you 10% off. All you have to do is use our link in the description or the code Nintendo Prime 10. So if you go to IntoTheAM.com slash Nintendo Prime 10, you can get 10% off your order. And one of my favorite aspects about these shirts is that they are pre- shrunk so not only are they soft not only are the industry leading print quality they are pre-shrunk so whatever size you get it will always stay that size through dozens and dozens and dozens of washes as have a lot of these because i wear these every single day all right guys let's get right into the news <laughs> first up we have a new a uh, top five investor in Nintendo. So uh, a Saudi Arabia's public investment fund has purchased 5.01% of Nintendo's stock. So they now own 5.01% of Nintendo, which makes them a majority stakeholder in the top five. They actually aren't the majority stakeholder, but they are a top five stakeholder in Nintendo. Now, some people are obviously a little bit concerned about this due to uh, perceptions and various things that have happened in Saudi Arabia over the years. Some people really don't like the current prints. There's a lot of things going on uh, where people are going to be on one side of the fence or the other. A lot of this is going to come down to politics. We don't really talk about the politics here. So instead of focusing on the political political aspect, I'm going to focus on the facts. The facts are they own 5.01% and they have next to no say in Nintendo. Uh, what's happening here is much of the wealth of Saudi Arabia comes from the oil industry, which has seen demand lessen year over year as the advent of electric cars are taking off. And because of this, they are looking to take the vast wealth they've accumulated and start to invest it across a wide swath of industries, including gaming. They've, they've got investments in Capcom, SNK, and others. So yeah, this isn't shocking. They've been doing these investments all over the place and they're just diversifying their part portfolio and making sure that when the oil money dries up they still have a bunch of money because it's diversified across a whole bunch of industries so it's not something that i personally would even worry about i know some people are like can't nintendo block the purchase i don't think nintendo cares they're a publicly traded company anyone can buy their stock they can't really do anything about it so uh i don't think they're going to suddenly you know by the way they spent like almost three billion dollars to get 5.01 percent just to give you an idea of how much nintendo is actually worth uh so yeah it's I, I wouldn't worry too much about it all right next up we have an update to pokemon home it dropped today and it added in pokemon legends arceus and all that into pokemon home but what's interesting is they're doing something now with home they've never done before for those who don't know what home is it's just where you can connect all your pokemon games transfer pokemon between games uh and this is interesting and this is according to central leaks because i don't own enough pokemon games to verify this myself so i'm reading what they said on twitter and it says after making some experiments with pokemon home 2.0 we can confirm now that each pokemon has its own move set stored for every game all right that means pokemon moves do not reset when moving to another game it's just switching it's a learned move set for that game for example take a pikachu in pokemon legends arceus when moving at the sword and shield its moves will reset for sword and shield however if later you move it again to sword and shield then the moves you previously taught it in that game will still be there and it won't be reset it will just restore the moves it learned while it was in sword and shield so what they're saying is uh this is huge because you can now customize pokemon moves per game what they're saying is basically if you 
if you take a Pikachu out of Pokemon Legends Arceus and put it in Sword and Shield, the moves will be reset in Sword and Shield, and you can pick whatever moves you want at that point. But you can then transfer it from Sword and Shield back to Legends Arceus, and it will have the same moves it had in Legends Arceus when it left Legends Arceus. And then if you transfer it back from Legends Arceus to Sword and Shield, it will have the moves you set in Sword and Shield. This now means you're not stuck with the same moveset on the same Pokemon across multiple games. This is a massive change of the way of homework because homework where you'd have to have the same moveset across multiple games that's not how this works anymore because the movesets can vastly change game to game and the needs of those movesets can change game to game especially when you consider pokemon legends arceus isn't as focused on multiplayer as say sword and shield might be that it's really cool that you can really customize each pokemon on a per game basis i think that's really really cool by the way pokemon go is supported by pokemon home uh, as our uh i think the uh, brilliant diamond shining pearl uh the list is growing as more and more pokemon games come out the upcoming scarlet and violet are going to likely support home as well uh and this is just a really really nice update and that's why this is update 2.0 because this is a massive change to the way home has always worked and i'm really excited by this change i know you know it's not that national decks people want but this is a very very good quality of life change that just makes it um makes you more confident in moving pokemon back and forth between games without worrying about losing move sets so in the lead up to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 coming out in July, after they moved it up two months, uh, Nintendo of America and really all of Nintendo has been doing various advertising campaigns around Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And they were posting up screenshots. And today they put up a new batch of screenshots that just have my jaw dropping a bit. So the tweet reads, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 3's Great Cody Falls is a great place for a swim and it features a giant waterfall that's just begging to be jumped off. Cannonball. And you guys are seeing the screenshots now, and the, the, they drop four of them, and my lord, not only from the Mega Beast, like one's literally walking out from underneath the waterfall. Um, you, you see another shot with, with some floating, uh, probably some either fauna or enemies over the water. Um, you, you, another shot of it showing a building kind of coming out of the water as well. Uh, and then another one with, the, with, with a, a really big draw distance to be honest, uh, combined with a rainbow. And, and every time they show these screenshots, by the way, these are direct from game screenshots. Uh, what's interesting is just how clear everything looks. Um, I'm, I'm not sitting here arguing that this has anything to do with like a Switch Pro or like a new Switch coming out because I don't think that's what's happening here. I think what's happening is their engine has matured on the Switch. They've learned how to develop even better on the Switch. And frankly, they're using probably FSR super resolution. And uh, these are the end results. And I got to say, it looks absolutely incredible. Uh, I have never been more excited to play Xenoblade Chronicles 3 than I am now just for the Vista scenes alone. And I never thought I'd say that about Xenoblade because Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a bit too blurry for me to really enjoy the Vistas as much as I wanted. Definitive Edition was better, of course, but I've already experienced Xenoblade Chronicles. Um, but now we got the third one and I'm, I'm just so stoked. Uh, this, this game looks absolutely incredible. And if you had told me, uh, you know, two years ago that these were screenshots of an actual game running natively on switch i would have said bullshit so this is awesome kudos to monolith soft can't wait to see what this does and i'll see what breath of the wild 2 is going to do as well i think that's going to have some impressive visuals too and our last story is one I find quite interesting. So for a small period of time, there was a free demo for Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury available on the Switch eShop. It actually popped up right before there was about to be some eShop maintenance. Then the eShop went down and when it came back up, it was gone. So nobody was actually able to download it. And the demo button, when you clicked on it, never actually did anything, but it was there for a moment. Now this could just be an honest mistake from Nintendo. It also could indicate that they are working on a demo for this game and maybe other games. One thing I want to see Nintendo do is every single first party game should have some sort of demo available on the eShop. I think that's something that Nintendo needs to focus on. I think while the sales are absolutely incredible of these games, it, they, they can be even more incredible if people can actually try them out for free if it's a game that they're not sure they're going to be into. Like Splatoon 3, I don't know if you want to be, okay, here's a demo. And other companies are doing this as well. We know Xbox and EA and Ubisoft and now PlayStation, like starting to offer like these two hour type of demos where you can kind of just play the whole game for two hours and see if you like it. Uh, I really like that idea. I don't, I know that's not what Nintendo's doing. They're doing the more traditional separate app demo thing. Uh, and I'm cool with that as well. I just want to see more of them. And if it, nothing else, this really is a good indicator that something's happening because this factually occurred, saw it with my own eyes, 
Fortunately, I didn't screenshot it because I didn't really think it was that big a deal. I thought, oh, whatever, I'll screenshot it after maintenance. And, oh, my God, maintenance came and went, and then it was gone. So uh, I guess you could say, believe me, or you can also just check out a Reddit thread that exists on it well, where other people confirmed it was there as well. So you don't have to just believe me. You can believe others. So anyways, I think this is really cool, and I just hope this means we're getting more demos soon. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nintendo RoboJance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank Into the AM yet again for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go to IntoTheAM.com slash Nintendo Prime 10. Get 10% off of your order on these premium, pre-shrunk, super soft, high-quality print shirts, or just get some basic t-shirts to wear around the house or as undershirts. That's what I use a lot of them for as well. So uh, thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video. Thank you all of you for tuning in, and oh boy, I hope to see all of you at the podcast tonight and at prime gaming fest next month uh the giveaway pile is growing uh and don't worry you'll be able to sign up for game tournaments for prime gaming fest soon details on that to come i think by the end of the week at least you'll be able to sign up for one of our gaming tournaments by the weekend thank you guys and i'll catch you later